Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm sorry this video probably released a couple days after I planned, but the reason is pretty legitimate. This run was supposed to be kind of an easy-ish run that had a holiday theme. And uh, yeah, it turned out to be one of the most difficult runs I've ever done. And I picked Unova because their in-game seasons mirror our real-world seasons. Well, not really, but December is winter, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, I thought it would be a nice holiday-themed episode, and of course we had to pick the Santa Pokemon, Delibird. And I've never used a Delibird before in any playthrough ever, and so I never really thought about how difficult it would be to use one. You see, Delibird learns one move. I mean, it learns TMs, but via level up, it learns Present. And Presents, while nice to get on the holidays, is a terrible, terrible move. So it is 90 accuracy first off, and then how much base power does it do? Well, 40% of the time it deals 40 base power, which in this game is actually worse than tackle, but is slightly higher than the 35 base power that we know and love from tackle in Gen 1, Gen 2, etc. 30% of the time it deals 80 base power, that's a pretty solid move, and 10% of the time it deals a whopping 120 base power, or the same as double edge. But you know there's got to be a catch, aside from the 10% chance it misses, there is a 20% chance when it does hit, it heals your opponent one quarter of their max HP. So yeah, that's pretty bad. In addition, Delibird's stats are also pretty bad. I mean seriously, there are first form Pokemon with better stats than these. And there's one more thing we should talk about. Because while I don't like my videos to get too technical, statistics do play a big part in Pokemon, and we often talk about base statistics, which are species-wide, but I don't always talk a lot about individual statistics, or IVs. And basically all I usually say is I reset till I get good stats, but with Delibird it was very very difficult, and in later generations it's not just good stats, but your nature, which ups one of your stats by 10% and decreases another by 10, plus your ability, of which Delibird has two. Vital Spirit, which doesn't allow Delibird to sleep, or Hustle. And when I finally got a Delibird with decent looking stats in both attack and special attack, I got Hustle. Now Hustle increases my attack power by 50%, but... It also decreases your accuracy by 20%, which means that Present actually has 72% accuracy, or the same as moves like Blizzard or Thunder, which I often won't use for being too inaccurate. And that's okay, J Rose, you'll just teach a TM, right? Well, Delibird learned some decent TMs, however, in black and white, a lot of them aren't available till the mid to late game, and so we're going to have to do a quite significant chunk of this game with our only move being present. And no better way to illustrate this than with the first gym leader, and it's Silen, which technically I'm strong against but don't actually have any super effective moves. This was a bit of a mistake. I replaced Oshawott as the starter with Delibird because I thought it would make the rival battles more consistent, You'd have one rival with a strong Pokemon and one with a weak, it would just be reversed. But I forgot the first gym leader is also based off the Pokemon you picked, so what can we do? It's, it's fine, it doesn't make that big a difference, because the battle is RNG based anyway. I just have to use present and hope it hits, and that I get base 80 and 120, and not too much of the base 40 and especially no healing. And yeah, that's pretty much my strategy for almost every gym battle going forward. Sometimes though, I do have to level up for reasons, and in this case I thought leveling up to level 13 would work. Funny enough, in my first battle at level 13, I get a max power present against Lillipup, so it knocks it out in one hit. And I get a base 80 power against Pansage. If it were a Panseer, it would have been a little more annoying, but as you can see, it wouldn't have made too big a difference because I get either another base 80, or potentially an even rare base 120. I don't know, nor do I really care, because we've won, didn't take too many attempts, I think just 5 overall, and my first at level 13 like I said. So we have one gym badge, and this is the last gym badge that's going to be easy. 
because after doing quite a bit more game, to be honest, we're going to battle Lenora. And Lenora is also the normal gym leader. Now, I get that Silent is supposed to be grass type, but he has a normal Pokemon, so it doesn't feel quite like a grass gym. And Lenora has more powerful versions of that Pokemon, and the most annoying being this dog thing. Now, some of you might not know that I'm actually Canadian, and when Canadians see I-E-R, it's E-A, Laurier, Cartier, or Herdier. And I know now it's Herdier, but this thing was Herdier to me for a really long time until I thought, oh, it's Herder, like a herding dog. Okay, that, that makes sense. But yeah, if I ever do say Herdier, it's because for years, that's how in my head it was pronounced. Anyway, it has Intimidate. And in a lot of these runs, Intimidate is very annoying. This is no different, and I really wasn't making any progress, like at all. As you may have noticed, I do have Thief. It's only base 40 power, which is the same as the weakest present. So while there's slightly less risk in terms of accuracy, there's no extra reward with those 120 and base 80 power, which we need. And when you finally knock out the Herdier, you get Watchog, and Watchog knows Retaliate, which deals a whopping 140 base power if it's used the turn after another one of your allies faints. I use it all the time in competitive. Very good move. And even if it's not used with the 140, Herdier and Watchog both can lower my defense and can one it KO. And I'm not over leveled to be fair. I'm pretty much at their level. So I figure I need to level up and I start leveling up more and more and it's not really helping all that much. I start being able to get past the Herdier more consistently, but that Watchog is still so very frustrating. And what makes it more annoying is there's very little I can do here. There are no moves I can learn, no items I can equip. I mean, the Orenberry, but that does really very little at the end of the day. 10 HP is only about a sixth of my health, depending on my level. And it's not my HP that's a problem, it's either missing with present, or doing too little damage. And that's the thing, if you think about my odds in this fight, they're bad. I need each present to hit, which is 70% chance. And then when it does hit, there's only an 80% chance it actually deals damage. So, I actually have under 60% chance of when I use present to deal damage to the opponent. And I'm really looking for base 80 or 120 power, which is just about 29%. Those are pretty terrible odds, considering I need to happen two or three times. And this is where Hustle kind of becomes a double-edged sword. Because on one hand, it's contributing to this luck because of the misses. If I had Vital Spirit, it would be a 36% chance of getting the outcome I want. But here is where the good part of Hustle comes in. I would be doing 50% less damage. So honestly, I think the slight luck element of Hustle is actually worth it. I would need to level up even more, and you can see my level is creeping higher and higher. How high does it go? Level 29, and I should note that unlike in earlier generations, Black and White completely changed how experience growing works. Before, it was just a static formula. So 40 experience points gained from knocking out a level 4 Metapod doesn't matter if you're at level 6 or level 60. It's the same starting in black and white to decrease the chance of people getting too high level, it's actually on a curve. So the higher level you are, the less experience you gain from knocking out Pokemon. And so it starts getting really, really tedious to get to super high levels. Even though Delibird is actually in the fastest level up group, I also did a bit of EV training, which I'm not going to go into, but I did hope to raise my attack. I wouldn't really see the dividends of this until later in the run, but I did think it would help. The one saving grace, though, is that you actually can battle Audino. I don't need to show that, just you run around the grass rustles and then Audino will pop up. It has extremely high experience growth, so even though you gain less and less, you're still gaining two or three hundred experience points every time you knock out an Audino, which did help me level up much, much quicker and get to this point. And now finally, let me show you how you beat Lenora. Well, it's a massive help when you start out with a critical hit. That was probably base 80 power. It didn't really matter because critical hits ignore Intimidate. So I'm dealing full damage. And let's not forget, an Intimidate is used against me to start. 
which now that I think about it is an accurate representation of what my attack would look like without hustle. I then hit, clearly that was a base 40 present and leer. Kinda bad because retaliate can come close to knocking me out. And I heal the watchog, that's wonderful. Another leer is kind of okay, but we're getting into close to one KO territory. Then though, I get what I think is yes, it is a base 120 power. Still doesn't knock it out, but that's three quarters. Retaliate? I do tank it. Barely. And I go for Thiep, hoping she doesn't heal. That's really unfortunate. The gym leaders are far better than the ones we remember from Red and Blue. They heal at appropriate times. And in that case, I wanted the better accuracy of Thief. It would have knocked it out so close. But what can you do? Let's just use present again, and yes, very good. And yeah, it was very frustrating. I'm grateful that I finally beat Lenora. And so we can make our way to Castellia City and eventually battle the bug gym leader, Berg. And unfortunately, even though Castellia City is massive, kind of like Celadon, we aren't going to get any useful TMs. Not quite yet. But hey, Berg is the bug type gym leader. This shouldn't be too bad, right? I mean, okay, he leads off with Whirlipede, and I'm getting some poor present luck, but even after a Screech, Poison Tail, it's only doing about a third. That's not too bad. But after getting a powerful present, I can use Thief, and we can make it past Whirlipede. Not bad. Now he has a Dwebble. Uh-oh. Hopefully it doesn't have any rock moves. Uh, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Seriously though, like what else can I do? I can't really level up that much more. I mean, I can, but you know how long it would take? Because how high a level I am compared to the wild Pokemon? There really aren't many more trainers. I already defeated all the ones in Pinwheel Forest, and Route 4, there are some of them you can battle. But a lot of them have Rock-type moves anyway, so they're not worth defeating. What am I going to do? Is there anything I can use? Well, there is. And it's a move I don't like to use at all. But, I am very lucky, and I did not plan this at all, that I can use. And hey hey, I'm gonna use Attract. I'm sure no one got that reference, but that is what the announcer says when you use it in Pokemon Stadium 2. I played a lot of that game. But, why Attract is so lucky, is that I didn't plan on Delibird being female. I didn't really care. In fact, I preferred male, so I could call it Santa. When it happened to be the one I wanted was female, I called it Mrs. Claus. But because Berg is male, all his Pokemon are male. That's kind of how they do it in this game. And it just so happens we can use Attract to avoid grinding to an absurdly high level. And by the way, using Attract doesn't guarantee anything. It just means we're going to have a 50-50 chance every turn that Dwebble doesn't attack. It's like worse confusion, but it never wears off, which is kind of nice. I should note that Hustle only affects physical damaging moves, not special moves and not status moves, because they're not buffed by 50%. Perhaps I was unclear, so I should reiterate that Attract is still 100% accurate. And guess what? Now that we have Attract, it doesn't actually help as much as I'd like it to, because we're in a very annoying spot. I use Thief because it's more consistent and it's not resisted by the rock typing. However, the amount of damage I do leads Dwebble to being, without a critical hit, a 3-hit KO, and I've yet to defeat this thing. Plus, Dwebble will heal because it puts it in range for a heal. So it's the worst case scenario, so instead of a 3-hit KO, it's potentially a 5 or even more if he uses another potion. So after 10, yes, 10 unsuccessful attempts at knocking out Dwebble, I decide to level up a little bit more. First to level 35, and that still wasn't good enough. I was getting ranges, it was very luck-based, and still hadn't managed to knock out Dwebble even a single time. So, I leveled up to level 36, lost another four more times, and now finally, I get, you might think that's 120, but it's actually only 80 base power, and actually was a low range. That could have knocked it out. And unfortunately, the Whirlipede does heal after that. That sucks. And you can see Thief is now doing half, so that's how you can tell Present was an 80 base power. My next Present heals the Whirlipede, that's fantastic. But if I get another 80 base power, it doesn't really matter. Poison Tail isn't doing nearly as much damage, which is also very good. And luckily, the very next Present is a base 80 power or 120, I don't really care or no. But we knock out Whirlipede, but Whirlipede is easy. Now, can we knock out Dwebble? 
All right, let's set up a track. It goes for SmackDown. Now, I do survive and still have a pretty decent amount of health, all things considered. But obviously, Dwebble needs to stay immobilized for the rest of this battle. All right, that was a pretty unfavorable range. It may actually turn out to be a 3k, which would suck. Immobilized is good and great. That was pretty lucky the first time we've beaten Dwebble. And now we have Leaveny. Leaveny doesn't have anything good to hit us. Grass and bug move, so this could be fine, but I wish I had more HP because it could still knock us out. I go for present, it misses. That sucks. String shot is fine. I actually still outspeed, I'm a little surprised, and only 40, I'm gonna guess. I mean, I know it's only 40. And another string shot, so now Leave and E will outspeed me. Alright, it goes for Razor Leaf. That does almost nothing. Very lucky, has a higher chance to crit, but that's only about 12%. Present hits again. Unfortunately, another 40 base power. And I'm not sure if Thief will knock it out. So I go for present. Protect. That's fine. Another Razor Leaf. I have 6 HP. Please hit. Yes. Finally. Oh my gosh. That battle also took over an hour. I did not anticipate Berg and Lenora being so difficult. And guess what? The next gym leader is Electric Type. So if the bug gym took us an hour, we're going to have to spend like three hours, right? Well, not exactly. Because finally, in Nimbasa City, I don't know, I'm going to pronounce things wrong. I didn't watch the anime. They're based on clouds. It's based on Nimbus Cloud. I, I don't know. Call it whatever the heck you want. In the amusement park city, there is a TM, an amazing TM that will render present obsolete. That's right. The last present against that Leaveny is probably the last one you'll see in this entire run. Because we're going to get Return. It's hilarious that two runs in a row make such great use of Return. But it's based on friendship. I'm not sure exactly where my friendship's at. But it's at least going to do like 80 base power. If not, maybe the full 102. Regardless, it has 100% accuracy. With Hustle, that's 80. That is still better than 72. Plus, we don't have to worry about 40 base power anymore. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. And based on that, you're probably expecting me to say that Elisa was a first try victory, but she wasn't. And the main reason was another luck element that we're going to have to deal with, static. There are certain abilities that will status your Pokemon if they make contact 30% of the time. And a bunch of Elisa's Pokemon have static, including Molga. And basically what was happening is I'd use Return, it would want a KO, but I'd get staticked by a Molga, and then I would lose. Obviously, the other thing could happen is Return could miss. She only has three Pokemon, two Amolga and a Zipstrika. It's a one a KO against each of them, with or without a critical hit. But finally, I got a run where it hit three times in a row. No statics. Obviously, it's not the most consistent thing to hope for, which is why I took a few attempts, but we're still relying on way less luck than before. So we have four gym badges, and usually around this time in the video, we're close to the Elite Four. And we only have half of our gym badges. Will Clay allow things to go a little bit faster, or will he slow us down? He is the ground-type gym leader, but there is one Pokemon I'm a little nervous about. So he leads with Crocorock. Thank goodness this does not have Intimidate. And Return if it hits, one it KOs Crocorock. And here's the Pokemon I was super worried about, Excadrill. I go for Return. Wow, that did good. Oh, critical hit. That's why it did such good damage. And oh, well, that missed. So we can knock out Excadrill, but that was really lucky. Critical hit plus a miss with Rock Slide. That is a 6.25% and a 10% chance. Not very likely. The final Pokemon he sends out is Palpitoad, which I knock out. I got a critical hit, but I was unsatisfied with this battle. Clearly, that was some pretty crazy luck. Not only did Return hit three times, got a couple critical hits and a miss from Rock Slide. Let's try that again. Once again, Crocorock is a one-hit KO with Return. This time, I'm going to use Attract against Excadrill. I think that would be the best play, and it might take a few attempts. It does not get immobilized, but misses again with Rock Slide. Wow, what are the odds? Now, Return, as you saw before, does about a third. It's immobilized. Another Return. It's immobilized, so yeah, we're gonna win once again. I mean, there's not very much Palpitoad could do against me. Definitely good luck in this battle too, but this is the strategy I probably would've used. And I'm pretty sure Rock Slide would be a one at KO. It's double super effective, but you know what? We had a first try and I guess two first try victories against Clay. I'm gonna say that's good enough. Five gym badges, 
this is uh this is looking pretty good and things are gonna look even better pretty soon because a bunch of the very powerful tms we can learn we're about to get access to them but not before we battle skyla the flying type gym leader there are quite a few trainers we need to battle in between these gyms so i've leveled up quite a bit and her first pokemon she leads with is swoobat return does great damage and that's one down Next is a Pokemon most unpheasant. I go for Return, and this is the first one in a while. It did not want a KO without a resistance. So, yeah, pretty good, but Leer, not really a big deal. She does heal. I decide to go for Thief, because even if she heals, she won't heal again, because she's not within range. And thankfully, Return has been hitting, so that is two down. Finally, she sends out Swanna, and it's kind of weird, the sixth gym leader only having three Pokemon, but whatever. I decide to go for Fly. Fly is 90 base power in this generation, but 95 accuracy. Unfortunately, I miss, and Aerial Ace does pretty good damage. I try it again, and thankfully it hits. I knew it would be a 1 KO. By being the same type, it gets an additional 50% boost, so that is way more damage than Return. And that is 6 Gym Badges, and after we beat Skyla, although she doesn't actually give this TM herself, we are very quickly going to get the TM for Aerial Ace. And Aerial Ace is maybe not for gym battles, we might need the extra power from Fly, but for regular battles, a real game changer. It cannot miss. Plus, with Hustle, it's doing a lot of damage. And we're going to get the Sharp Beak to do extra flying damage. So the mundane regular battles we haven't been talking about go from potentially hazardous to mostly very easy if there's no Rock Pokemon. With Rock Pokemon, things are going to be a little tricky, at least until we get to, so I used to call this Icarus City, but it's actually probably Isiris or Isiris. It's based off Cirrus Cloud, so I know it's Cirrus, but is it Isiris or Isiris? I don't know. The city that's got a lot of snow in it, you can actually buy the TM for Blizzard. And once we defeat Bryson, the seventh gym leader, we'll get Frost Breath, which does 40 damage. That's deceptive. It's always a critical hit, so it actually in this generation would deal 80 damage. Not quite as good as Ice Beam, unfortunately that's not available till the post game. But hey, we still have to beat him, and I don't think it's going to go all that badly. He leads with Vanillish, I go for Aerial Ace, and there goes Vanillish. Now we have Bear Tick, I go for Aerial Ace, it's doing just about half. It goes for Icicle Crash, and wow that did, okay, because Critical Hit. Did a lot of damage, but that's not going to be enough to actually matter, because we knock it out the next turn, and Cryagonal has one of the worst defenses of any non-pre-evolved Pokemon in the entire game. So we're easily going to be able to knock it out with Aerial Ace. Again, just three Pokemon. I have to play Black 2 Challenge Mode. That would be probably a lot more interesting. But, hey, that is for another run. We are almost done this run. It has been absolutely zooming by since we got Return. And... What a weird sort of difficulty curve where it spiked at the beginning and it's really seemed to have gotten easier by the end. We have one more gym leader left, Iris, the champion of Black 2, White 2. And she's a dragon type gym leader. Remember, we do have access to Frost Breath after we've beaten Bryson. So, this is going to be another one try victory? Funny enough, I'm not actually going to use Frost Breath. Against Fracture, I'm going to set up Hail and then I'm going to try and sweep with Blizzard. Fracture goes for Dragon Dance, which is fine. Hail will cause Blizzard to never miss, so that's easily going to knock out Fracture. Drudigan, no problem whatsoever. And yes, even the mighty Haxorus is no match for Blizzard. So that was really easy. And I think something else we should probably mention is that TMs are relearnable in Generation 5. And this is huge because... Even though HMs are permanent and we need to go to the move deleter to get rid of them, we can pretty much get four different moves for every single trainer starting in this generation, at least when it comes to TM moves. And that is humongous. The ability to almost fully customize your move set and really make sure it's tailored to each individual battle, that is so much better than in previous generations. Heck, in Shedinja, I wasn't able to teach X-Scissor until the last battle because I needed moves I was barely using, like Return and especially Sunny Day that I used all of, what, three, four times in the entire run? And that's what made it possible. So I am very excited to see what kind of cool stuff I can come up with in Gen 5 and beyond. That being said, 
we have to now take on the Elite Four. And there's actually one other interesting customization factor in the Elite Four, which is that for the first time, you can battle each member of the Elite Four in whatever order you want. And that kind of provides some interesting strategy, especially with how luck-based Delibird is. If I don't want to save between Elite Four members, I can start out with the really luck-based ones, and if I lose, I don't really lose that much progress, and then get progressively easier and easier until I get to members that are consistent victories. But first things first, I'm going to battle each member and sort of figure out what the trouble parts are before I come up with final strategies, movesets, and order. So I decide to start off with Marshall, the fighting type Elite Four member. They only have four Pokemon, that's just so weird to me. By this point in the game, they would have five in most games, but yeah, just four in black and white. So he leads off with a throw. I have Aerial Ace and a Sharp Beak, and it is a 1 KO against throw, so that's pretty good. But next comes out Sock, and it would be a 1 KO, but Sock has Sturdy, which starting in Gen 5 means it can't be taken from full HP to zero in one attack. And unfortunately, both throw and Sock know Stone Edge. It does have a 20% chance to miss, and so I avoid it, and Marshall's able to heal, but the battle, at least for Sock, is over. Heal as much as you like, that wastes a turn, and eventually, Aerial Ace will knock you out. Next comes out Conkledur, I think is how you pronounce it, I don't know. But we don't need to worry about it because we knock it out. And finally, Mian Shao, and yeah, Aerial Ace, easy one to KO, so... I'm seeing a little bit of an issue with Sock, but Marshall looks okay so far. Next, I decide to go to the upper right chamber and battle Caitlyn, the Psychic type trainer. And Reuniclus starts out, I decide to go for Aerial Ace, see how much that does. About three quarters, not bad, and it goes for Thunder, and yeah. So that's going to be an issue. Well, I try to battle Marshall again, but this time Sock doesn't miss. It's an 80% chance of that happening, that it won't miss. And yeah, I think I'm going to need to change up my strategy there. Let's just battle the other two and see if there's any other TMs or leveling up I need to do. So I still haven't battled Chantal, the ghost type Elite Four member. I have great luck with those. And right off the bat, I foresee two problems. I go for Blizzard, which misses. It goes for Will-O-Wisp, but misses. And that's one problem. But the other problem is if I use Aerial Ace, my Hustle ability will get overwritten with Mummy, which will essentially decrease my attack by 50%, which I don't think is good. So I'm going to go for Blizzard again. Thankfully, Will-O-Wisp misses again, and I'm able to knock out the Cofagrigus with a Frost Breath. But that just chandelures me into Chantal's Deadly Trap. I go for Aerial Ace, Flame Body, I cry, uh-oh, Fire Blast, oh yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Sorry about that, but this is going to be a real problem. There is still one more Elite Four member I haven't actually challenged yet, and that is the Dark Type user, Grimsley. But before I do that, I decide, okay, I can see some problems already occurring. Let me make a few changes, and... The first change will nullify the Marshall issue with Stone Edge, well partially at least, and that is getting TM90 substitute. Because the only issue we have with Marshall is Sock hitting me with a single Stone Edge. Well substitute, unlike Protect, I can actually use four turns in a row because I have an odd number of health, and all I need is for Stone Edge to miss one time. The odds are pretty good it does, and then as we saw, Aerial Ace is enough which never misses, to knock out all of Marshall's Pokemon. And if I did my math right, the odds I get at least one Stone Edge miss, which is all I need, is around 60%. So not amazing, but good enough. I then decide to battle Grimsley, because I haven't actually tried to battle him yet. He leads off with Scrafty, and thankfully, no Intimidate there. I go for Aerial Ace, and I knock it out. Then comes out Bisharp. Brick Break will knock it out, but unfortunately I miss. There is a 20% chance of that happening. So I lose, but so far I don't see any huge problems with Grimsley. And to that end, I decide to challenge him after doing a few more errands, getting some other items I think I might need. And I'm able to once again knock out Scrafty. I don't miss against Bisharp, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately though, Crocodile does have Intimidate, and thus Brick Break does not want to KO. 
it heals, I go for Aerial Ace, and I was worried about ranges, so I go for Brick Break, a little risky, and yes, I took some significant damage from that foul play, but it worked. Now out comes Lipard, it goes for Fake Out, which I'm not too worried about, and so long as this hits, which it does, so Grimsley shouldn't be too big of an issue. I'm thinking that he might end up being the easiest one. Unfortunately, this particular run ended at Marshall, where I didn't get good luck, but after I re-enter, I decide, you know what, it's time to see how Caitlyn is going to go, because the rest of them I kind of have an idea, I still don't know how I'm actually going to defeat her. At first, I try a strategy similar to the one I used against Marshall, but it wasn't nearly as effective. The biggest issue being is Aerial Ace does not want to KO the Reuniclus, and it doesn't want to KO other Pokemon as well. I mean, it will if I level up a bit more. Gothitelle ends up using Thunderbolt to knock out my substitute, and Musharna is obviously not going to be a one ko either, and I don't have great special defense, so Psychic knocks me out, meaning this strategy really doesn't look like it's going to work. So I end up battling Caitlyn again and again and again, figuring out different things, and finally I came up with a workable strategy. Now we are going to use Substitute against Reuniclus and hope that Thunder misses, but even if it doesn't, we're okay. Because once we get to below half health, the AI realizes that a Psychic will knock it out and Psychic is more accurate. So while it still can go for Thunder, it will prefer Psychic. And you also see we have Fly now. Fly will one hit KO most of Caitlyn's Pokemon. So that's actually really nice. Yes, we sacrifice some accuracy and thus introduce some luck. But reliable one hit KOs, well semi-reliable at least, is pretty good. Sigilyph, however, I can knock out with an Aerial Ace now that I'm at level 72, now level 73. So that is Caitlyn, and this is a semi-consistent strategy. In fact, I actually could have used Fly a turn earlier. In case you're wondering why not use Fly right away, Thunder actually is a move that can hit you while you're in the air, which really, really sucks because otherwise this would be even more consistent. But hey, after spending very many battles trying to figure this out, I was pretty happy. And now that I finally defeated Caitlyn, I think I have a pretty good chance of actually getting through the Elite Four, if you can believe it. So I'm going to go back to Marshall because a lot of luck is required, or at least some luck. So let's see if I can get that Stone Edge miss. Now, this was a dumb idea, and I'm not sure why I thought this would work, but I teach Protect so I can PowerPoint stall in case I don't get the miss from the throw. This was a really silly idea because throw would just knock me out with its other attacks. Anyway, I do get a miss, and I only need one. It doesn't matter that it's against the throw, because now I'll just have a substitute set up for the sock. And once I get one miss, the battle is over. There is literally nothing that can happen that can cause me to lose. No Gen 1 miss. No chance of Aerial Ace missing. No ranges. Just sit back, relax. Yeah, you gotta hit the A button a few times, or you can use the touchscreen. But we're able to defeat Marshall. And I think I'll go battle Grimsley because I don't see him being a problem at all. This battle I don't really need to narrate because you've already seen it. The only difference is against the Crocodile, I do try to go for Fly, and it sucks because if I level up just a little bit more, then both Fly and Brick Break would be one of KOs. In addition, there is a Black Belt available in this game, but not until the post-game the Black Belt being the item that gives a 20% boost to my Fighting-type attacks. That would be what I need to knock out every Pokemon. However, so long as I don't get really, really bad Brick Break luck, I will be fine. Thank goodness Lipar doesn't have really good attacking stats on its own. And so we have made it back to Chantal, the last member of the Elite Four that I haven't defeated yet. And I opt for a slightly different strategy that I think is going to be a little sneaky. I try to set up a substitute in case the Cofagrigus goes for Will-O-Wisp. It doesn't. As I would figure out later, it actually does prefer Will-O-Wisp turn one, even if I've set up a substitute. So it doesn't know what I'm going to do, which is nice. In this case, it just went for Shadow Ball. I went for Fly and knocked it out. And the reason I did this is because I'm at a bit of a higher level. It knocked out the Cofagrigus, and now... My physical attacks are pretty much 100% accurate. I mean, 95 for Fly. So, so long as I can knock out Chandelure, I'm good. 
Unfortunately, the caveat was if I could knock out Chandelure, and I am so close. Darn it. Yes, Fire Blast could also miss. There's a 15% chance of that. But I think just with a little bit more leveling up, this would be super consistent. And so that's exactly what I do. I do go through the Elite Four a few more times, genuinely trying to win. But unfortunately, since there is a lot of luck, I still haven't been able to defeat all four of them in a row. In fact, I still haven't beaten Chantal yet. Finally, though, level 77, and I did experiment with different things, not getting mummy, using frost breath, but in the end I decided that the easiest thing to do was to use fly against Cofagrigus and knock it out. With my level up, it is a range, but I do knock out Chandelure with one fly. Next comes out Jellicent, which really can't do all that much, but of course, stuff can add up. Case in point, after missing with Fly, it goes for Surf, and that's going to be a 3 a KO. It 2 a KO if it gets a crit. After I hit with Fly, it comes very, very close to knocking it out, but it's not a 1 a KO, so leveling up could be good. However, it is too little too late for this battle for Chantal. Even though she's going to heal, Aerial Ace is doing just a bit more than half, meaning it will knock it out the next turn. Finally, the Golurk, so long as I use Frost Breath and it hits... I will be able to knock it out, and I have defeated her. The question is, will I be able to defeat all the other members, considering the luck needed both for Caitlyn and Marshall? And Caitlyn, to me, seems the second most difficult, so I'm going to battle her next. Like before, I'm going to set up Substitute and hope for the Thunder miss. Thankfully, its second Thunder does miss, and I decide to be a little bit sneaky. I go for Aerial Ace hoping for the crit. I don't get it, I knew it would knock out Reuniclus, and I knew it would put it within healing range. And here is where I'm going to be very sneaky. I'm going to go for another substitute. So now, because my HP is low, it's going to go for Psychic probably, meaning it will not hit me in the air. Focus Blast, same thing. And so I will be able to maintain my substitute, which lessens the degree of luck for the remaining Pokemon. As it turns out though, I wouldn't need it, because that is only in case I miss a fly, but I don't miss a fly either against the Reuniclus, or the Gothitelle, or even the Musharna, and Sigilyph is still a one-hit KO with Aerial Ace. So that is two down, and now we just have Marshall, which we've beaten many, many times, and Grimsley, who looks really easy, so this might be it. You'll notice here, by the way, I get rid of Frost Breath and teach Brick Break. By the way, to stop players from just teaching TMs to restore power points, you actually keep the same number of power points as your previous move had. So I have to think of which moves to overwrite, because, for example, Blizzard only has five power points, and sometimes, like Aerial Ace, I'd like a little bit more than five power points at the time. And there aren't that many Ethers and Elixirs, so I need to be careful. Anyway... Unlike Caitlyn, this battle literally just comes down to getting a single Stone Edge miss, which we get on the second Stone Edge. And, uh, okay, I mean, yeah, I still have to complete the battle, but it is over. Very, very good feeling when you have a battle so consistent that after you knock out the second Pokemon, it's done. I mean, I am overleveled, let's be honest. I'm level 78. It's not the highest level I've been at, but the Elite Four Pokemon are at a lower level. And I will say, I find it mildly disappointing there's only four and they're at such low level. But hey, can't really complain about it being too easy when I've yet to win, right? And the last Elite Four member, Grimsley, I've only actually lost to a single time. Will this be unlucky number two? Alright, Scrafty, Aerial Ace, one a KO, easy. Please don't miss. Very good. Bisharp is down. Please don't miss. Oh, that stinks. But... Here's something you may not know. It's now a 1 KO. That's why I battled Grimsley last. I was hoping I've leveled up enough that Brick Break would 1 KO Crocodile, and now all I need is not to miss against the Lipard. Of course, gonna go for Fake Out, and that's it. We have defeated the Elite Four. And unfortunately, we get a bit of an anticlimactic finish because, spoiler alert to a game that is a decade old, actually just slightly older, we don't get to battle the champion here. Instead, we battle Anangestus with not just the option to save in between, but even if you lose, the Elite Four stay defeated. So that's kind of annoying, but 
Ann and Gestus weren't easy by any means. First thing I had to figure out is how to catch Zekrom without having it first in my party. When you catch Zekrom ordinarily, you actually can't knock it out. I mean, you can, but if you knock it out, it says, oh, I think it wants you to catch it. And then, if you catch it, it doesn't go to the back of your party, it goes to the front. And I get it, the game wants to do the epic Zekrom versus Reshiram battle, but we're trying to do a solo run here. So, what I do instead, and there is a way around this, all you have to do is withdraw until your party is full. It will then ask if you want to deposit one of your active party members for Zekrom. A feature we wouldn't really see again in Pokemon until Let's Go, and a very good one overall. But we just say no, and then we can do the rest of the game with just Delibird. And, oh yeah, we have to face a Reshiram. Hopefully Fly will want a KO. It doesn't. Fusion Flare obliterates Delibird. Okay, this is uh, gonna be fun. Truth is though, I had the Never Melt Ice equipped. This part would be way easier in Black version because N would have the Zekrom, and Zekrom's not a fire type, it's an electric type. So I could just use Frost Breath to knock it out. Instead, I have to go for Fly, and with the Sharp Beak, I do knock it out. But now we have Caracosta, and Caracosta has Stone Edge, which we've already seen, and it has Sturdy, which we've already seen. But, for whatever reason, it just wouldn't miss. Like, ever. It took me half an hour. And yes, I'm playing this at increased speed. So that's two hours it took me to knock out the Caracosta once. After getting annoyed, I even started to level up, but that really doesn't matter, because with Sturdy, there's no way to knock this thing out. And what I was trying to do is if I level up high enough, I could equip the Bright Powder instead of the Sharp Beak, and it would require quite a bit of leveling up, but I could do that, and that would give an additional chance for Stone Edge to miss. But like, really, this was absolutely driving me nuts. Do you know how annoying it is just to do the same thing over and over and over and over again? And I'm telling you, it would get crazy streaks, like 12 Stone Edge hitting in a row. 15, nine, and I would just like scratch my head. All I need is for this thing to miss. Oh, oh, and guess what? Guess what? When it would miss, I would miss with Brick Break. Every time. My accuracy with Brick Break was something like 50%. Its accuracy with Stone Edge was like 95%. Seriously, I felt like I was playing like a hacked version to make this fight artificially more difficult. And as long as it took, there's really not much more to say. I just couldn't get the luck I needed, and it wasn't like I was hoping for crazy odds. Finally, I level up all the way to level 89, and by that point, I no longer need Sharp Beak for Fly to 1 KO Reshiram. And with Bright Powder, hopefully Stone Edge will actually miss. Look at that, the very first time. Wonderful. I decide to go for Frost Breath so it wouldn't heal. I need two hits anyway. Stone Edge does hit, so bye-bye Substitute. Thankfully, finally, finally, for the first time, I'm able to knock out this freaking Caracosta at level 89. Oh my gosh, this sucked. But we still have four more Pokemon, including Archeops. And thank goodness Frost Breath hits. Oh my gosh, I'm going to lose to something stupid, aren't I? Clink Clank can really grind its gears, literally, and knock me out. And, oh, thank god I don't miss. Oh, never mind, that's a Zoroark. Okay, so this is really Clink Clank. Hopefully you don't miss against it. We don't, and finally, the double scoop of vanilla ice cream, Vanillux, we don't miss. I was definitely not in the most celebratory mood. It was more exasperation. To be fair, this was my first battle level 89, First battle with the Bright Powder, but now it's time to try and battle Dennis. And uh, if you don't know why I'm calling him that, the music in the original Black and White and Black 2, White 2, because of how low quality the recordings were, the name Gestus sounds like Dennis. But enough talking, this is the final battle in Black and White. Let's defeat Gestus. So he also has a Cofagrigus. Hooray, we already know the problems with that. I decide to just go for fly, won't have to worry about accuracy, and we'll figure out if we need more power later. We do knock it out in one hit, that was really good. So we're full health, 
Bisharp, we've seen that one as well. We will hit 100% of the time now, so that's actually quite nice. Now I had to decide what I wanted to do with the Hydreigon. Do I go for Frost Breath or do I go for Brick Break, which is 100%? Frost Breath does have a 10% chance to miss. I opt for the Brick Break, unfortunately doesn't knock it out, and Fire Blast doesn't miss, and I lose. Or not! Okay, wow, I'm actually really surprised. So that's kind of cool. Let's see if Frost Breath knocks it out. It does, so that's good to know. But the next Pokemon is Electros. I try in vain for a Frost Breath, knowing it wouldn't want a KO, and it does an Acrobatics knocks me out. But this is not the end of the world. N does stay defeated. And now I can actually change up my moves, my items, try and come up with a better strategy. Don't forget, I had the Bright Powder. I didn't have the Sharp Beak. And I could equip the Never Melt Ice. And that may help. Let's try it. Well, spoiler, it didn't work quite as easy as I thought it would. I'd end up having to battle Gestus quite a few times and having to work on strategy. And again, very disappointing since it's the champion I can just save like it's any old gym leader. Not what I like to do, but I did figure out something. Remember how I said Chantal Cofferbrigus prefers Will-O-Wisp? Well, Gestus prefers Toxic, and that's the way I'd lose. And while I might have won with a Hail Blizzard strategy that I was trying out, I instead opt to go for Substitute. And there's the Toxic. Now, I was going for Fly, but unfortunately, it is a range, and it was taking away Hustle. So I decided instead to go for Frost Breath, which comes very, very close to knocking it out, but not quite. However, as we've seen before, Gestus is just going to heal, and so long as I don't miss, I can knock out the Cofagrigus. And so for the first time, I've made it past with Hustle. Unfortunately, that means this Brick Break could miss, but it doesn't. So down goes Bisharp. And with the Never Melt Ice, we actually can knock out the Hydreigon with a Frost Breath, which is pretty good. But here's where I wanted the substitute. Unfortunately, Frost Breath comes oh so close to knocking out Electros, but it doesn't actually do so. And if it goes for Wild Charge, it'll knock itself out, but it goes for Acrobatics. Okay. I wish that I had Aerial Ace, but thankfully Frost Breath hits, and down goes Electros. I have made it to this point before. And this is where most runs would end against the Bufalant, but I figured out that with Hustle, so long as I, yes, I hit, it would be a 1 at KO. It came close without it, so I knew it would. And now all we have left is a Seismitoad. Can't do great damage to me. And with Hustle, so long as I hit, yes, Fly knocks it out and we've done it. We have defeated the Unova region by beating Champion Gestus? Eh. Okay, I mean, like, I don't know. The victory music's playing and all, but like, this doesn't feel right. I've never ended a run without defeating the champion before. It's just, it's the way it works. I'm not in the Hall of Fame. So can I really say I've beaten the game with just a Deli Bird? I mean, the credits are gonna roll. So usually that's where I say it's over. Because there's lots of post-game content, and we can't play all of it. I don't know. Well, judging by the time that's left, I think you know what I ended up doing. And I actually really had to think about whether I would include this in the video or not. Because the problem with round two of the Elite Four, now they have six Pokemon, which is good. All the Pokemon they had return but they might be in a different order and with different moves and two new additions. Plus, if you beat them, you get to fight Alder. But, Caitlyn, remember how I found a strategy against her? Yeah, that doesn't really work anymore. You see, I tried at various levels until I got to level 100, and my stats are what they are. I can't do any reverse EV training. I did train high for attack, but... Unfortunately, I wasn't quite able to 1-KO her Pokemon reliably. And I tried lots of different things. And this is the long and the short of it. Beyond everything I need to do to get to that point, which I could talk about and go into detail, because I had a, a long, complicated strategy that was semi-consistent at getting past so Musharna leads off, then Reuniclus, then Gothitelle, then Sigilyph. But now she has two extra Pokemon. She has a Bronzong, and she has a Metagross. And both those Pokemon are Steel-type. 
And I don't have anything super effective against Steel type at all. What I was going to try to do is use Ice Beam, which you do get at this point of the game. It has a 10% chance to freeze. So I would do my substitute strategy, which I got pretty consistent. It's very close to what I did before with some minor changes. And it would work about 75% of the time. Basically, if Fly missed, that was a big deal. But usually we were pretty good. The idea was I would set up a substitute on Reuniclus because Thunder could miss. Hope to keep it. And then I'd have two attempts to freeze the Bronzong. And Bronzong, despite the fact it's not known as an offensive Pokemon, Flash Cannon pretty much won a KO'd me if I was at anything less than three quarters of my HP. And I spent like literally two hours on this. The longest I'd spent on any trainer, I think almost ever. Like, I was getting Drayden flashbacks from Ditto. This, this was really, really, really bad. And in the end, I recognized that I was going for a luck-based strategy anyway. So, might as well just go for an easier luck-based strategy. And yes, I'm very disappointed by this, but I decide to use Double Team. I know, I know, I know. I'm the one who doesn't use Double Team. It's what you guys always tell me. I love Jero's, how you're able to figure stuff out, but trust me, I tried everything. Every item, every move. It's just there aren't enough items available without using the Battle Subway, which I can't use because I only have one Pokemon. And if I use other Pokemon, then I'm not just beating the game with Delibird, now am I? So, yeah. Once I switched to Double Team Strats, I won my very, very first battle. And I wouldn't have if I didn't go get one additional item that's only available in the post-game, the Leftovers. Because Substitute plus the Leftovers plus Double Team is just such an unfair strategy. You set up a Substitute, you set up enough Double Teams that Pokemon don't hit you enough. I mean, they can. It came close at one point. But they simply just don't hit you enough. Even though I don't have a recovery move, I just recover my HP quick enough. And yeah, without the Sharp Beak, my 1 KOs, they're not happening, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not in a rush. I can just use Aerial Ace or Ice Beam if I need to, and just slowly but surely take out every single one of her Pokemon. And I didn't feel amazing about this, but I literally tried everything else. I, I promise you. And if you remember what I said almost an hour ago, I was talking about how I thought Delibird would be a fun, easy, holiday-themed challenge. And I didn't expect this to be the most difficult Elite Four battle I've ever had in my life. Like, seriously, this was something else. But thankfully, the rest of the Elite Four is much more similar to their previous iterations, and the strategies carry over better. Chantal is who I decided to battle next. She was pretty difficult, and it did take me five attempts, the biggest reason being I got burned, literally. And uh, that would ruin the attempts, but otherwise, she's not too bad. I do, like I did against Gestus, use Ice Beam in this case against Kofagrigus because I simply can't afford to lose Hustle, even though my accuracy is not great. Thankfully, it misses with Will-O-Wisp. I would have taken a Shadow Ball, but that works well, so that's one down. Drifblim, despite its massive HP stat, is no match for the Mighty Ice Beam, so that it's two down. This is where I'd also get burned. I would go for Fly, and then Chandelure would burn me with Flame Body. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Very good. With Hustle, I also will be able to 1-KO the Jellicent, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, I got hit with Cursed Body. Not the end of the world. I can't use Fly, but two Aerial Aces will knock out Frostlass. It goes for Blizzard, does massive damage, but thankfully, not enough for me to even be too concerned. And Golurk is the final Pokemon. Ice Beam is super effective. And we have beaten Chantal. Next, I'll battle Grimsley, and I guess I should probably make this clear. I have tested out strategies against each one of these trainers before I stop to try and battle Caitlyn for three hours. So that's why I know how many attacks I need, what ranges are. I've done these all before. I've beaten every single Elite Four member. Now it's simply a matter of doing so after having beaten Caitlyn. And since I used luck-based strategies on her, I have absolutely no issue saving and just trying again and again. I don't think I'll need to against Grimsley. I have a pretty good strategy against him. Leads off with Sharpedo, Aerial Ace 1 KO. 
Next, we see Scrafty once again, Aerial Ace when it KO. This time against the Crocodile, I decide to go for Ice Beam since it's more reliable than Brick Break, and it does want to KO. And it also should want to KO the Drapion, except it doesn't. I get a Freeze though, so that's good. I should mention, I've actually done this 10 times before. This is the first time I didn't knock out the Drapion, and probably was getting good luck because that wasn't even a sliver of HP. Probably something like 12 out of 16 times I knock it out, but lucky freeze, good for me. I'm able to knock it out, and although Drapion's not a risk of knocking me out, what it would do is lower my health enough so that Lipard's Fake Out and then Sucker Punch would knock me out. Now, I'm not at risk for that happening, so as long as I don't miss with a Brick Break, I don't. And thankfully, Bisharp doesn't know Sucker Punch, that would be a little bit problematic. We have, on our first try in this run, beaten Grimsley. That's great. Now all we have to do is defeat Marshall. Strategy is the exact same. We just need a couple more Aerial Aces, but we need one Stone Edge miss. Can we get it? Oh, sorry, I misspoke. It's slightly different. He leads with Breloom, who has Effect Spore. So we're going to go for Ice Beam to knock it out. Sorry, didn't mean to mislead you. Sock still comes out second, and now all I need is for one Stone Edge to miss. It took two attempts, and I think between the two, it hit six times in a row. But I knew eventually you would have to miss. And while in competitive, a lot of these Pokemon would have Mach Punch or something like that, none of them do. No Fake Out, no Mach Punch, nothing like that. Doesn't matter how low my HP is. Aerial Ace will knock out every single Pokemon. I was a little worried about Throw, but it knocks out Throw as well. And uh, yeah, the final Pokemon you didn't see, Toxicroak pretty easy so that's all four elite four members but now we have to go and battle alder and alder has a, a pretty balanced team it's one of the more balanced elite four teams and i wasn't really sure what i wanted to do against some of his pokemon well we're at level 100 we can either do this or we can't let's see if we can so he leads with excelgore and excelgore's only move that it can really do much damage is focus miss or sorry focus blast and so I'm going to set up a substitute and hope for a miss. Unfortunately, the first one does hit, but hey, if first we don't succeed, try, try again. We do get a miss. Good. Aerial Ace should easily knock out Excelgore, and it does. That's one down. Now, Buffalant knows Stone Edge, which is pretty bad. I'm going to go for Ice Beam. Let's see how much that does. Uh, about half-ish. Probably Aerial Ace would have been better. I don't think Fly would have knocked it out, and unfortunately, Stone Edge hits. Gonna try and set up another substitute, why not? Another Stone Edge hit, of course. So hopefully Aerial Ace will do enough damage. It does, very good. So that's two down, but we don't have much HP to spare. Now Volcarona comes out. It has Flame Body. So 30% chance the run ends right here, right now. Please don't burn me. Good, very, very good. So that's half the team down. Next comes out Ice Cream Sunday. Might as well go for Fly, because if I get hit with pretty much anything, I'll lose. Please hit, please hit, please hit. Yes! Yes! Okay, we have two more Pokemon to go. Escavalier has good defense, and it knows Iron Head, so this could be it. Only hope is to go for Fly. It goes for Aerial Ace, meaning that would have knocked me out. So I don't even have to worry about super effective. Please hit. Okay, it hit. Yes! Okay, one more to go, and we're done with this. It's over. Drudigan, the final Pokemon. Will Ice Beam do enough? It does. And I don't even know what to say about this run, so I'm just going to leave it at that. First time I've ever done a rematch versus the Elite Four, and I think it's going to be the last. I typically have the rule that when credits roll, the game is over. That being said, black and white are strange, the fact you don't battle the champion, and I do like seeing the Hall of Fame screen. So it's probably going to be my last black and white run. But don't fret, black 2, white 2 are supposed to be objectively better games. I've never actually played them before. So almost definitely we're going to do the challenge mode, which has harder teams, higher levels, all of them have items. That should be really challenging and there should be tons of Pokemon that are almost impossible. So we're going to have a ton of fun. But yeah, it's really cool to do all these generations I haven't done before. And look at me blabbing. I said I was done, so we're going to end it here. Take care, everyone.